trigonometric functions of any angle. Up to this point, we have learned about the unit circle, and we've also learned about right triangle trigonometry. However, in our last lesson over right triangle trigonometry, the theta always had to be an acute angle of a right triangle. But we want to be able to apply this to any angle, including obtuse angles. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Instead of using the unit circle where we previously said that sine of theta was equal to y, now we're saying we've got a circle, not necessarily a unit circle, and therefore instead of r being 1, we actually have to divide by the radius. So if you were more familiar with the unit circle, just think about the unit circle being multiplied by r. If you were more comfortable with right triangle trigonometry, again, that's exactly what's happening here. Yes, this is theta, but notice I'm actually going to be using theta here, and we'll get more to this later. This is actually called a reference angle, where this value is obviously x, or in this case, it's actually a negative x value. This value is y because it's positive, and then we would have to compute using the Pythagorean theorem the value of r. Now, before we take a look at an example, I do want to point out to you that what we're going to do is we're going to be using essentially positive angles, which we will call reference angles in a moment. But you need to keep in mind the values in each quadrant. So we know that in the first quadrant that x is going to be positive and y is going to be positive. Now, why is that important? Because sine is therefore in the first quadrant going to be positive and cosecant. Cosine is going to be positive. Tangent is going to be positive. Secant and cotangent all going to be positive. Also keep in mind that y cannot be equal to zero. X cannot be equal to zero y cannot be equal to 0, and x cannot be equal to 0. We know for sure that r will not be 0 because the radius of our circle will not be 0. Uh, in the second quadrant, so this is the first quadrant, in the second quadrant, we know that x is going in the negative direction. So x is negative, y still positive because we're going up. So previously I wrote it like this. If that makes you feel better, do it that way. In the third quadrant, x is going in the negative direction. So x is negative. y is also going down, so to the left and down. So that's in the negative direction. So this is negative, negative. And in the fourth quadrant, x is going in the positive direction, but y is going in the negative direction. So that's positive, negative. So keep that in mind as we're working through this lesson. Let's take a look at how we can use what we have just learned in evaluating the six trigonometric functions of the point negative three, four. Now, before we get started, I do want to point out to you that theta is this angle. And this line is the terminal side of that angle. But when we're looking at making a right triangle, we're going to actually do the angle right over here. So you might be thinking, well, that's cheating. Well, it's not. This is, for instance, pi minus theta. It's going to give us this same value and this same value because that's what we're interested in is in reference to the x-axis. So without worrying about the angle itself, which we'll talk about in a moment when we talk about reference angles, let's look at this right triangle. If this point is negative 3, 4, then this distance is x and it's negative 3. If this distance is positive 4, then y is equal to positive 4. The Pythagorean theorem, which says leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, will give us the value of r squared, which is 9 plus 16 or 25. Taking the square root gives me 5, and 5 will be positive because the radius will always be positive. 
so r is equal to 5. From here, it's now very easy to compute all of the values of the trigonometric functions. We knew that sine of theta was y divided by r. So previously it was just y. Now because it's no longer a unit circle, it's y divided by r or 4 divided by 5. Cosecant is the reciprocal of that or 5 fourths. Cosine is x divided by r or negative 3 fifths. The reciprocal of secant is negative 5 thirds. And tangent theta is negative 4 thirds, so that's y over x. And again, it's okay to put this negative value out front as opposed to um, putting 4 over negative 3. Either one is correct. And then cotangent is just flipping that over, so x divided by y. I've mentioned reference angles a couple of times already, but let's take a look at what they are and why they're important. We just took a look at an example at negative 3, 4. And even though theta was over here, when I drew the triangle, I drew the triangle using theta as a smaller angle, a totally different angle, which really was me using a reference angle without really knowing what a reference angle was. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to always want a positive and acute angle. So yes, this angle is positive. This angle over here, it doesn't really work when we're talking about starting here at the initial side. But it does work when I'm looking at right triangle trigonometry. I can see that this is a positive angle. So for instance, if I'm looking at theta prime, and theta prime is just fancy for what's the reference angle for 200. Theta prime for 200, we know 200 degrees, this would be about 180, so 200 would be about right here. So really the question is, if I were drawing a triangle, what would be the acute angle that I would use? So yes, this is 180 degrees, this would be an additional 20 degrees. So how can I compute that without drawing the picture? Well, I can say 200 minus 180. That gives me 20. I could take 360 minus 200, and that gives me 160. But again, that's not acute. So 160 would be if I went to about right here, and then you'd have to say, oh, okay, yes, this leftover would be 20. But really, it's easier just dealing with half pi. So we know that theta prime, in this case, is 20 degrees, and that's the degree that I would use when solving any of the trigonometric functions for that angle. Now, the second one is 2.7, and you'll notice it's not 2.7 degrees, it's 2.7, which means we're dealing in radians. So let's shift gears into radian brain and remember that this is pi radians, which is 3.14. So 2.7 is less than that. So 2.7 radians is going to be somewhere in here. Now, how can I find that value? Well, just as I did before, in this case, because 2.7 is less than pi, whereas um, 200 was greater than 180. So in my first example, I took 200 mi minus 180. In this one, I'm going to start with pi. Pi minus 2.7 would be the exact answer, or if I you know, rounded, it would be about 0.44 um, radians. For my last example, I'm looking at pi, I'm sorry, theta is negative 150 degrees. So again, that would be somewhere over here, uh, probably right about here. And I want to know what is this angle if I were going to draw the right triangle. And again, in this case, we've got 150, which I'm going to take 180, I'm going to add the negative 150 and find the value of 30 degrees. So this triangle would be 30, I'm sorry, this angle would be 30. Uh, and then I could go from there to find anything else that I need. 
what we want to do now is essentially put together a lot of what we've already learned. So we've learned about the first quadrant of the unit circle. We've learned about coterminal angles. We've learned about reference angles, and we've learned the signs of X and Y in each quadrant of our coordinate plane. So we're really going to be using all of that in evaluating using reference angles. So it might seem a little bit, um, I don't know, over the top or like there's a lot of steps, but really the first step is to find the reference angle. The second step is to evaluate based on the unit circle value. And the third step is to make sure your result has the correct sign. So when we're dealing with the reference angle, we're going to be dealing with 180 degrees or 360 degrees or pi or 2 pi. And depending on what the question is will depend on obviously whether you're using degrees or radians, but also if we're taking 360 minus something or 180 minus something or perhaps adding. So let's just work through these so you can get an idea of the workflow. Cosine of 5 pi over 3. First thing I want you to do, so I guess step zero, is to visualize. I want you to think about where is that angle? 5 pi over 3, if I was starting here, this would be 1 pi or 3 pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3 is somewhere over here in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that on my sign because that will come into play at the end. But the question is asking for the reference angle, what's this angle? So this angle is 5 pi over 3, what's left over? So in this case, it would make the most sense for me to take 2 pi because it seems that I'm getting very close to 2 pi, right? So 2 pi, which writing it as a denominator of 3 would be 6 pi divided by 3. I'm going to subtract 5 pi over 3 because that's what's left over, which gives me pi over 3. So this angle is pi divided by 3. Now, notice I've only given you the first quadrant. Well, that's just fine because pi over 3 in the fourth quadrant is the same as pi over 3 in the first quadrant, except for the signs, and we'll deal with that at the end. So what I'm dealing with is this triangle that uses pi over 3. Now, they're asking me to find cosine. So if you'll recall, in our unit circle, all of the values are cosine of theta, comma, sine of theta. So cosine of pi over 3 would be the x value, which would be 1 half. And then I would come over here to the sign and say, okay, that's the x value. Is the x value positive or negative? It's positive. So my answer or solution is 1 half. Let's do all of that again for the next question. So again, we can become familiar or comfortable with this workflow. So I'm going to get rid of all of my markings and I'm going to now look at tangent of negative 210. So negative 210 would again be starting here at the positive or initial ray and I'm going in the negative direction. That would be negative 180. I want a little bit more than that. So this is what my visualization of my angle would look like. And I'm trying to find this angle. So what is that angle? Now again, I'm going to be looking at, because it's degrees, 180 or 360. So you might say, well, that's great. Let's take 360 and combine it with negative 210, and that gives me 150, and then say, well, that's not great because it's not an acute angle. So I'll tell you the way the book tells you to do it. The book says, okay, if you have a negative angle like negative 210, go ahead and find the reference angle to that. And the reference angle, I'm sorry, not reference angle, the coterminal angle. So the coterminal angle would be a positive 150. That's this angle here. And then use the 150 to take 180 minus 150, which is the 30 degrees. So we're dealing with 30 degrees. I'm a little bit too lazy for that, I'll be honest with you. So as I'm visualizing, I'm saying, well, this is 180 degrees. And if it's 210 total, I know there's 30 left over. So even though if I took um, negative 210 and I added 180, 
that gives me negative 30. I'm smart enough to know that I'm dealing with a positive value, so I'm dealing with positive 30. So again, what am I dealing with? This triangle right here. And remember that was in the second quadrant, so I'm just gonna put a star there. And tangent is sine divided by cosine, so y divided by x. So tangent is y divided by x, which the y value is 1 half. The x value is radical 3 divided by 2. So again, I'm looking right here at that ordered pair. Then I'm going to reduce to get 1 divided by radical 3. I don't like the radical 3 in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by radical 3 over 3. I'm sorry, radical 3 over radical 3, which gives me radical 3 over 3. Last step is to find the sign. The x value was negative, but the y value was positive. So this would be a negative, negative, negative. Negative radical 3 over 3 will be my final solution. Let's do it one more time. Back to radians, we're dealing with 5 pi divided by 2. And this one's going to look a little bit different because this one's not going to actually make a triangle. So if I think about 5 pi over 2, I've got pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. So really, I'm just looking at a coterminal angle of pi over 2. Now, cosecant, if you'll recall, cosecant of theta is the same as 1 divided by sine of theta. So in this case, we're taking the cosecant of pi over 2, which is the same as 1 divided by sine of pi over 2. Sine is the y value, and that's 1. So this is 1 divided by 1, which is 1. And I don't have to worry about the sine in this case because it was the actual coterminal angle is what I'm using. I do have one sort of challenging question that I would like you to try on your own. I'm giving you not theta, but an angle in quadrant three such that sine of that theta is equal to negative four fifths. And I want you to use that to compute cosine theta and tangent theta. So again, if you're up for a challenge, press pause, try the question, then press play to see how you did. If you're not up for a challenge, we're going to go through this together now. You have two ways in which to begin your work for this question. And it really depends on if you're really more geared in your brain to that right triangle trigonometry or not. So you can use the Pythagorean identity of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one, which is what I did here. I took negative four fifths squared, I subtracted it from one and took the square root. And then I said, hey, cosine of theta in quadrant three, if you'll remember quadrant three was negative negative, which means cosine of theta, which is that x value, is negative. So cosine of theta is negative 3 fifths. If you're not really into the Pythagorean identities yet, you will be, um, but that's okay. You can just use right triangle trigonometry, which might make more sense in your brain. You would still use the negative 4, the 5, do all of the Pythagorean work to find that B is three, but then again, keeping in mind that because I'm in the third quadrant, B is actually going to be a negative value. And so I would end up again with cosine of theta is equal to negative three fifths. Now from here, it's very easy to find tangent. Tangent is sine divided by cosine or Y divided by X. And again, this point here would be negative three, negative four. So y divided by x would be negative 4 divided by negative 3, or 4 thirds. Um, or I could take tangent of theta, which is sine divided by cosine. Either way, negative divided by a negative gives me a positive value of 4 thirds. Up next is section 4.5, graphs of sine and cosine functions.